Welcome YouTube. The video you're about to see is a reaction video. It is a video of opinion. Nothing personal is meant toward the individuals in the videos. My volition uh, for posting these reaction videos is to look at these videos and critique them through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Usually they are quantum grammar related videos and I'm looking for correct sentence structure knowledge here. And I'm also looking at the claims made in the videos through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Now you may notice that I'm doing certain things with my hands. I am not making any secret hand signs or gestures. When one is doing public speaking, there's only so many things you can do with your hands. You can fold them, maybe put them on your hips, dangling lifelessly at your sides, put them in your pockets, hold them like this, whatever it is. I'm not making any type of signaling gestures, unless I do this, which means shaka. Keep in mind the information, the things that I'm sharing in this video are for educational purposes only, entertainment purposes only, nothing personal towards the individuals in the videos themselves. Thanks and enjoy. Welcome ladies and gentlemen to a very special reaction video. I'm pretty excited about this one uh, simply because of the subject matter. Uh, to tell the story behind the video, I actually started reacting to it and I did like, you know, five, ten minutes of it. And for some reason, it didn't record. So I had to do it over. I had never watched the video before. And in listening to the subject matter, a lot of things dawned on me having to do with the subject matter. And the subject matter is this. This video is a reaction the, the video that I'm reacting to is actually a reaction video in and of itself where this guy right here you see with the 70s style open shirt, uh, bare chested type thing. He's an attorney supposedly, a real attorney, and he's reacting to a telephone call between federal postal judge colon Layton hyphen Lionel colon Ward and an attorney named uh, David Funkhauser and then uh, another, I'm not sure if they're an attorney or what they are, but another individual named Julia Kessner or Kessler. I couldn't uh, figure out which name that was, but I know for sure it was David Funkhauser. So the context is this. Layton is a federal postal judge certified by colon David Ivan Wynn, colon Miller, and colon Russell hyphen J, colon Gould. Okay? And he's serving like 23 years in prison. And I could never really figure out why this happened. If indeed he is, you know, this was one of the things that caused me to doubt correct sentence structure when I was first learning it. So I was like, how can someone named a federal postal judge under David Wynn Miller and Russell J. Gould, how can they be in jail for 23 years for paper terrorism? It doesn't make any sense. Never got any clues as to why this was happening. I once saw uh, David on Project Camelot with Kerry Cassidy where he was talking about it. And also Leighton was on that one. And I think that was in 2017 or 16. And David laughed about it. And... Uh, and then in 2018 at the Reno seminars, we got to see Russell J. Gould talk about Leighton. And Russell sort of intimated that uh, Leighton didn't have a live life claim or something. And that the fiction was just letting him spin himself up and dig himself a hole and whatever, for whatever reason. But Russell was very cagey about it by my perception and never really said why these things were happening. He did however, make the comment that Leighton lacked certain knowledge. And supposedly Russell offered to teach him it and, I don't know, Leighton turned him down or whatever. But that's the context of this situation. And after watching only 10 minutes of this video, 
I myself think that I have a pretty good guess as to why Leighton is serving 23 years in prison. So here we go. This is from a channel called Law Talk with Mike, who is supposedly a real attorney. And there it is. This comment pretty much sums a lot of things up. To the utterly uninitiated, the process of law uses precise language and terms the lay person couldn't normally understand. This is why licensed liars, I mean lawyers, are required to correctly represent these people ignorant of the process. Your average Moor or Sov Sit, meaning sovereign citizen, attempts to usurp the language of the court with gibberish of their own design. Written like a true member of the bar, if you ask me. So it says, to the utterly uninitiated. What does it mean to be initiated into something? I don't know. Ask a Freemason. Or some member of a secret club such as, well, not a secret club, but a private club known as the Bar Association. The process of law uses precise language. So what this individual is basically telling you is that lay people, you and I, couldn't possibly understand the language of the law. The law created by these people in this club. Why is that, ladies and gentlemen? If we are all created equal, we all come into this domain the same way, rule one, rule equal, what could possibly be the reason for creating a set of laws with a language that you and I can't understand and only certain people can understand if they go to school for a certain number of years? Doesn't that sound a little strange to you? Doesn't that sound like an unfair advantage to do that? Hey, let's form a community. Okay, we got our community. We got all these people here and blah, blah, blah. Now, in order to control these people, let's create laws using language that these people, these normal people can't understand. Only we can understand it. And then we can charge them money because we have the bigger guns and clubs and we have the police and we have this and that and the third. And let's charge them money to participate with our little club so we can just continually make money off of them using language that they don't understand and only we understand and so on and so forth. You see where I'm going with this. That's the whole thing with the fiction system. You can't tell me that it was created so that everyone could be equal. It's the exact opposite of that. And this comment shows that. Why wouldn't a regular everyday man or woman be able to go in and represent themselves as themselves in a case using regular everyday plain simple English to solve a problem? Anyways, so let's get to it with this. Uh, what's his name? Law, uh, Mike, this real attorney. Let's go. Hi, this is Attorney Mike Irvin coming to you from Chicago, as usual, and I've gotten into some crazy stuff lately. Um, but today we're going to do another one on quantum grammar with a guy named Leighton Ward. We're going to call this one Leighton Ward, Sovereign Citizen. Let's do it. From the secret headquarters of the Sovereign Citizen Patrol, initiating video production sequence. Those are some cute puppies. We are no longer playing. <clears throat> so let's get revved up. It's time for Law Talk with Mike. I wonder if Mike practices law. Practice, you're not a professional. Cool intro. David Funkhauser. David Funkhauser. Yes, David, this is Leighton. How are you? I'm doing well, Leighton. How are you? Good. I want to wait a couple minutes to see if we can get anybody else on the line. Julia Kessner is here. All right, it's got David and Julia. I'm still waiting a couple minutes so we can get anybody else on the line. I'm going to put and the Leighton, call. Is this, being, is this being recorded? 
Oh, yeah, definitely. All right. Can we get a tran transcript of the recording when we're done? Uh, sure. David, I'm recording on my end also. Okay. Do you understand that, Layton, that we're recording it as well? Absolutely. Okay, so this phone call is, is pretty fun. It's, uh, it's Layton Ward talking to an attorney, and it's, it's kind of interesting because usually the attorney handles it pretty well, so he says a lot of things that I would say. <laughs> I feel like I'm taking the day off here. But uh, it's, it's interesting to see uh, quantum grammar in action. All right, so that tells me two things about Mike. Number one, he's obviously heard this phone call before. Number two, he probably does not know the first thing about quantum grammar. <clears throat> before we get started, are you or the court being represented at this time? I don't understand your question. Are you being represented by a lawyer, a real lawyer? No. Okay. Hmm. That's an interesting thing. Uh, David said, are you being, you or the court being represented by a real lawyer? What does that mean? Now, he's recognizing some sort of court, I guess. But think about the word real, all right? This is why grammar is so important in words and the closure and the meanings of those words. I'm going to show you. Like this guy right here, this Mike guy, claims to be a real attorney, R-E-A-L, all right? One way to solve the riddle of language and get down to the brass tacks of one word, one meaning, take the interpretation totally out of it, and I'm not talking about correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, specifically. I'm talking about period, end of story in general. How can we get closure on one word, one meaning, even if you're just using plain, simple English? One way is to parse the words that you're using, to know the meanings of the words you're using, to know the meanings of the particles of the words you're using. And if anybody tries to minimize the importance of that, then that's someone who either A, doesn't know what they're talking about, or B, is trying to use grammar in a way to confuse and manipulate people. Because that's how important grammar is. And the only way that I can, or well, one way that I can convey that to you is, think about it. Anytime you feel something, or see something, or hear something, or smell something, anytime you sense something, Words pop into your head all the time. The language in a contract determines performances. Everything is contract. And the grammar on that contract is of utmost importance. So on the one hand, the fiction entities will tell you, as I showed you in that comment earlier, how important language is, it's so important that you have to hire a liar, I mean a lawyer, to represent you because they know the language of law. That's how important the language is. But then on the other hand, they'll minimize it and they'll make fun of language. Like, oh, it's not that important. You know what this means. Assumption, presumption. So I'm going to give you a little bit of learning here, uh, Mike. If you're watching, which I highly doubt you are, let's find out, for example, the earliest nativity root meaning of real. Real is two syllables according to how many syllables? It's two syllables, R, E, and A, L. So let's look up those the root meanings of those two syllables. R, E is a word forming element meaning back, back from, back to the original place, again anew once more, undoing backward. That sounds pretty negative to me. It's a particle of negation. It's what's known as a particle of negation. If you're saying back from, again, anew. It's not happening right now. It's happening again. So therefore, it negates right now. It's somewhere else besides right now. So it means no. R-E means no. And then if you look up AL, 
It means of like related to pertaining to, i.e. contract. It has a contract with something. So R-E-A-L literally means no contract. I've just shown you that. So if you're a real attorney, <laughs> you're a no contract attorney. I'm going to go ahead and put myself on mute just for a couple of minutes. I want to see if anybody else is up on the call. And so we're going to get started. Let's see if anybody chimes in, we can find out who chimes in. Uh, first thing I want to go over is um, you guys, um, when you're writing a lawsuit or the stuff you guys are writing, are, do you under, actually understand the parts of speech and the stuff you write? Okay. Right off the bat, ladies and gentlemen, what Leighton just said there set the tone for this entire phone call. And in my opinion, it's very unfortunate that this type of tone was set. Think of the context of the situation. Think of the balance of the honor and the grace and the consideration of the other contract parties he's speaking with. He's literally asking them this question, knowing that this David Funkhauser is an attorney who went to school, went to college for seven years, in addition to the other 12 years that he went to school. And also, I looked him up. He was designated as what they call, I think they call a super lawyer. That's how good he is, or how much he, cases he, he's won in the fiction system. So by Leighton doing this, he has set the tone of the conversation in a very condescending fashion now yes i realize that people like this mike and david and any judge i've ever seen they are the purveyors of condescension sarcastic condescending and a lot of times arrogant just because of that knowledge that they have suppose i suppose it sets them above everyone else because they know the special language and the secret handshakes that us, us common folk don't know. Well, Leighton is using that same type of tactic. Although he's not being extremely blatant about it. He's just started off on a very condescending tone. Yes, Leighton, I went to law school. I understand how to write. And, and <laughs> okay, so sentences. then you can explain when you write a lawsuit, can you explain why when you write it, there's, you write it in such a manner that there's no facts written within the... Uh, this is minor, but like just right off the bat, you don't write a lawsuit. You draft a complaint. Uh, that's pretty universal. Well, Mike, in the, in the universe, you don't write a... You don't write, you draft a complaint. You don't write a lawsuit, you draft a complaint. Is that like when you get drafted into the military? Is it, is it that type of drafted? Because of my knowledge, if you have written words on a paper, they have to be written. You can write a draft. Am I right? You can write a draft with one of these. But if you want to get into semantics, I guess you would type a draft, right? Rather than write, it would be type. Type a draft. I mean, and this is, again, a tactic of the fiction where if we're all here to be understood and to comprehend one another, these types of semantics would never be considered. But fiction system being what it is, it uses the grammar to manipulate and play mind games. And the, 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 that's the way that most people just would like this guy that. is and right it, now. It's it's small, but it just shows it's your first inkling that that we're on, you know, off kilter here. Entire lawsuit. You, are you familiar with that? I'm familiar with your position on it, Leighton, that, that we don't know how to properly form a sentence or a sentence structure, but that's not what this case is about. And really all we're doing here is to try and have a meet and confer with you all about the lawsuit we filed, which you've now been served on. In the fact the, the, this is fun. Uh, you get to see one of these guys crash straight into an actual attorney, and the guy is pretty sharp. Not only is he sharp, but he didn't get caught uh, flat-footed here. He's aware of this uh, quantum grammar nonsense. So he knows exactly what he's dealing with. Okay. Now, I agree with Mike here uh, to a point. 
in that listening to the David Bunkhauser talk, he just said that he's familiar with Leighton's uh, position in the quantum grammar, which leads me to believe that so far, perhaps this David Funkhauser uh, knows more about quantum grammar than certainly this Mike individual, and maybe even Leighton Ward. Federal United States District Court for Arizona, which is a real court. Do you understand that? A no contract court. Uh, no, I don't understand that, because what you do when you write the lawsuit and everything you've written since day one of law. Now, ladies and gentlemen, take that into consideration. Leighton is telling the guy, telling David, that he doesn't understand what David means by a real court. And again, this goes back to the balance of the honor and the grace. Are we here to understand one another or misunderstand one another? Now, as I've said, the fiction uses that type of tactic where they don't understand what you're saying. They don't understand your words. They don't understand your sentence structure. Well, now Leighton is using the same tactic against the fiction that the fiction uses against him. Well, I don't understand. I don't understand what you're saying. Which, on the one side, might be true. But on the other side, on Leighton's side, we can pretty much guess that, yes, he does understand what the guy is saying. But he's playing like he doesn't. That's my guess. Law school is written in such a manner to create no facts whatsoever. You guys use adjectives, adverbs, verbs, and everything else but a fact. That's what you guys do. You, you write in such a manner to create no facts whatsoever. And then you go to a fiction court, the district court, and write the same Telling stuff. Telling people what the they're doing judges. is a trespass. Just like when David Wynn Miller uh, did this example where he had a pen in his hand and he goes like this. What just happened? And then someone says, you dropped a pen. And David said, uh-uh. You can't tell me what I did. That's Well, he doesn't say it was a trespass, but that's wrong. One can only make a claim for oneself. And Leighton is now telling them what they're doing. And that is a trespass. Uh, with my knowledge and perception, this, as I said, the tone was already set when he came in in a condescending manner. And the attorney is just not talking over him or anything, allowing him to speak. Which the poise, I commend that attorney, David, for his poise. And I can see why. He got the, the moniker of super attorney or whatever it was because uh, he's got a lot of poise. And then you guys go online, poke around, see if you can find some opinions online that justify your opinion and try to make a fact out of it. So, uh, All of this is, of course, complete nonsense. And what's amazing is it's prevalent. I, I just did a video on it. I got another one coming up uh and and we'll see but the attorney here handles it well when you guys write something i've already syntax that everything you've written to date has been 100 percent fraudulent mathematically i can prove it and you guys that, that serve from amazing. us just that the same. Is, uh, well okay are you done Let well it sounds amazing uh, it sounds amazing is that you guys write documents but you don't know how to write a fact that's amazing to me Leighton, what are you possibly basing that on where did you get your education <laughs> what are you basing this on okay this is i've heard um, enough to this point to say that I feel like this attorney, David Bunkhauser, he's a pro. He knows what he's doing. He's done his homework. Whether he has closure on the grammar or not, I don't know. But it's obvious to me with my perception and my experience of doing this that he knows enough about it to know that Leighton probably doesn't know what he's talking about. And probably doesn't have closure on what he's talking about. And I feel as though David Bunkhauser basically, from the beginning, handed Leighton a shovel. And is allowing Leighton to dig his own hole. Unfortunately, that's what it looks like. Because everything we've filed has been consistent with what our previous filings in, in court, including the United States District Court for the District of Arizona, which is an Article Three court under the Constitution of the United States. That is a real court. Your court is not. <laughs> well, that's your opinion of it. I, no, no, that's true. That's true. It's a fiction court under those fiction rules and fiction guidelines. That's what it is. And 
unfortunately, as Leighton's moving on here, Leighton's trying to tell them what they're doing or what they're not doing, what they have closure on, what they don't have closure on. But what's missing here, folks? Closure. If you're going to tell someone that they don't have closure or they're doing this, that, or the third, if they're using a fictitious conveyance of grammar, you have to be able to show them why it is and explain to them and teach them why it is you're saying that. And this attorney, David Bunkhauser, or I'm sorry, Funkhauser, has given Leighton multiple opportunities so far in these, you know, four minutes to do that. And Leighton has not taken the now space to do that. Leighton just continues, basically, from my perception, to parrot what he's probably heard David Wynn Miller say over and over and time again. That's what it seems like to me. It seems like he's just repeating things verbatim that he's heard other people say because he's not giving any closure to what he's saying. Um, he's not giving any weight or substance to it. As I've said many, many times in the past, if you speak with someone, a Vasily of the fiction system, and you know what you're talking about, even if they don't know what it is you're talking about, if you know what it is you're talking about and they know you know, it'll have a po you'll have a positive outcome. It'll work out the way it's supposed to work out. But if you don't know what you're talking about, if they have any type of uh, legal knowledge, they will know that. Even if they don't have legal knowledge, they'll know you're full of crap and things are not going to go good for you. And that's what I think is happening here. I think that this uh, attorney, David, is has determined that Leighton um, has a lot of bark but no bite. I don't know exactly what he means by uh, his court, but I imagine it's similar to the Russell J. Gould uh, Federal Postal Court. I, I'll, I'll put a link to that in the description below. It's the same. It's the same concept, but ooh, is it not a real court? <laughs> well, I don't know whether it's a real court or not. Meaning a no contract court. Here's the thing: as I said earlier, rule one, rule equal. Mike, if you're watching this. Do you agree that we all come into onto this earth uh, the same way? We all put our pants on one pant leg at a time, right? We all wipe our own butts, okay? Anyone can create a court. Anyone. Just because you got some dude wearing a black dress doesn't make them any more capable of knowledgeable of creating a court than a normal everyday lay person, although we are led to believe that and led to, you know, taught that through the authoritarian system. If you know what it is you're doing and you have full command of, of your construct, of course you can create a court. Um, I mean, there's mistakes. When you do these types of things and you go into these foreign vessels and dry dock, i.e., as he calls them, real courts, there are certain mechanics and certain logistics that go on that you have to know about because you definitely have to know what you're doing. Um, I'm not going to go into that here, but I feel like I feel like Leighton does not possess that knowledge, unfortunately. And as I said, I feel like he's just, you know, digging the hole deeper and deeper. Again, you're stating opinions. You don't know how to state a fact. And that's something you guys have never been trained to do. You think you're correct, and you think you're stating facts, but you say nothing but opinions, just like every single document you've ever written. And that's why I asked you guys to complete the, the charity project on the advocacy for consumer rights. It's a real simple project. You simply write a, a one over every adverb, a two over a verb, and so forth and so on. And Ladies and gentlemen, do you hear the condescension in his voice? I don't really see how someone in his position, which was a very, very serious position, facing jail time, would think in any domain or any uh, venue would speak to another individual like this. It's a very simple process. 
I mean, this is why I try to teach uh, my students to be calm, collected, use kindness, honor, grace, peace, neutrality, rule one, rule equal. I mean, Colin David Eiffel and Colin Miller may be able to get away with coming in and telling people they have a second grade reading level, but I would highly recommend not you or I not saying that to someone because that's just so, so condescending and it's just getting stuff off on the wrong foot, you know? That's a real bad way to start things off, especially when you're in this type of scenario. I haven't seen you guys complete that project. That would let me know that you guys actually know what a fact is. At this, uh, you could ask us to do all sorts of other crazy things that we're not going to participate in too. <laughs> we, we've got a life to lead and a practice to, to carry on with. Point in time. Ah, Mike just said he has a practice to carry on with. Kind of like, you know, little t-ball guys. They go to baseball practice. They're not professionals. They're practitioners. They're there to practice. So that's interesting. Everything you've done, even when you file documents in the county, Every time you file a document in the county, you do it in such a manner that the document contains nothing. It's just a bunch of opinions. So you guys are trying to go out. No, he does it in such a manner that it complies with the, the court rules and it, and it is to be understood and might actually get his client um, closer to their goal. For us, for putting a correct document, I filed a lawsuit against Flagstar for fraudulent grammar. They didn't do anything about it. They just ignored it. Therefore, we won by default. And therefore, I went and filed a correct judgment based on a correct lawsuit. That's exactly what happened. Into the mouth. Oh. Nice. Of course. Fraudulent grammar. This is actually the second time I've heard the phrase the court, where, where he claims to have a default judgment. I don't know. I, I'm guessing that's one of his made-up courts. <laughs> actually, uh, default judgment means no-fault judgment. It just means... The other contract party vacated. That's that's all that means. Um, and this individual is doing the same thing again, you know, like the fiction does. They pretend like they don't understand what's going on uh, when they actually do know what's going on. If this guy's an attorney, if he went to school for seven years to be a, a liar, lawyer, um, then he knows what a default judgment is, right? In unicorn land. Of course they ignored it, Leighton, because it's not a real thing. You, you send us a bunch of weird stuff and that nobody <laughs> follows, that you've never provided anybody besides you and the judge of your fictional court are the only ones that write like this and you think you have a basis for a lawsuit and you don't. And I'm telling you, and this is the reason for the lawsuit that we filed against you, you have, you have issued a false judgment and you have also issued a judgment or a writ that's been affected by Mr. Bullmore's uh, property. He called us the other day and was very... Uh, sympathetic for getting our our client into this, and he has now recorded a release of those same uh, silly documents. He's still probably going to be on the hook for our attorney's fees and costs, and I've told him that. So even if we get this resolved with Mr. Bullmiller, that doesn't get us resolved with you and the alleged federal postal court. So that's the purpose of this conversation, is to decide whether we can come to some resolution here or if we're going to have to litigate this matter in, again, a real court. So... I guess the context of this particular phone call is David Funkhauser is looking to find a way to resolve attorney's fees. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but that sounds like what he's saying, that this phone call, that he's willing to negotiate um, with Leighton for David's time and energy in doing whatever he's doing, which is how he makes a living, okay? Whatever you may think of that, or I may think of that, that, that's what sounds like what's going on. He's open to negotiating. And I have a feeling that Leighton is just not going to be hearing that at all, that he's not going to work this out in a peaceful and neutral manner which is the condition of state of correct sentence structure. Instead, he's going to go off into something else. But let, let's see if my prediction is true. Federal District Court, the United States. Can you identify the parts of speech in the words you just said? <laughs> no, I'm not. Leighton, I don't. Why would I do that? I know how to write. I went to seven years of college. Did you go to seven years of college? I don't need to go to seven years of college to learn something you don't know how to write to begin with. Like I said, when you're speaking right now, every single word coming out of your mouth, there are no facts. 
ladies and gentlemen, I know, I know this man's laughing, and I know that that other people may be laughing, but to me, this is sad. This is this makes me this makes me feel sad. My sensation is sadness at this point because I know this man is doing twenty three years in prison uh, because of things like this. Um, what he just said there is is flat out ridiculous. Flat out ridiculous. They've been speaking in plain English, plain simple English the whole time, verbally communicating in the trade medium of, of plain English. And now all of a sudden, Leighton is asking this guy to identify the parts of speech of the things he's saying, he's verbalizing, implying or implicating that David is using uh, adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble, right? So Leighton is, is requesting that David syntax the words he's verbalizing. When Leighton has been using the same manner, the same conveyance of articulation as David. So my earlier assessment that this David Funkhauser has more knowledge of quantum grammar than either this Mike guy or Leighton Lionel Ward, I'd have to say that I'm pretty close to the mark on that assessment. And anything you say, it's simply opinions. You're using adjectives and adverbs to modify every single word that normally would have been a fact, just like what you do in your writings. Like you have to challenge the same you... thing. We're having, we're having a conversation. What you're saying back to me is the exact same language. We're all right, speaking. But I can identify True. the parts of speech and the things I do. I can. Layton just said he can identify the parts of speech and the things uh, he does. For the proof of the claim is with the claimant. Um, He's not showing that he can do that. He's saying he can do that, but he's not showing it. He's criticizing this other guy for his grammar, but he's not showing him how to correct it, or he's not showing any type of knowledge whatsoever, just making ac accusations with no weight behind it. And so this David guy is, I mean, again, I can see why he got the super uh, lawyer award or whatever. His, his poise is immaculate. He did his homework. He ascertained that Leighton doesn't know what he's talking about. And is just burying him. I mean, well, Leighton's burying himself, unfortunately. And syntax everything you're saying, what right now, you don't know what you're talking about. Oh, you don't know the parts of speech. You can't even, in gosh. your own words, your own writings, anything you write, you can't identify a verb for a fact. You don't know an adjective. You wow. I mean, this is just so hard to stomach. First of <laughs> all, uh, you know, th th their theory makes no sense. And then they just they just say, OK, well, we're going to split all this up. And then they just assign random thing meaning to that. Well, that's the assessment that someone that doesn't know anything about the technology would say. But I do agree with Mike here that it's just hard to stomach and not for the same reasons, though, because when I go through the comment section here, I can see Mike joining in with the people making fun of Leighton Lionel Ward, making light of it, making jokes about it, that he deserves to be in prison. No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. Because I feel, and this is my opinion, I feel that he did what he did through nascience. I don't think he meant to harm anybody. I don't think he was out to rip anybody off. I think he was a true believer in whatever script Colin David Ivan Colin Miller and Colin Russell Hyphen J. Colin Gould fed him. I think he really believed it, but without any closure on why. Only parroting the things that he'd heard those two guys say. Those two guys, David and Russell, have massive amounts of court experience. And if you don't believe me, look up their names in court documents from the year 2012, for example, and you will find dozens of cases. Can't say the same for, for Leighton, I don't think, except for in relation to this. Um, it does, it, it just makes me sad listening to this now, knowing that... Uh, knowing that what had happened and how it turned out it, it doesn't mean anything and no one else understands it <laughs>
But for some reason, th this is caught on, and and you hear. And it really shows me this guy's character, that he would find it funny that another human being, another nonviolent human being, has been put in prison with rapists and murderers, okay? Simply because of nascence of paper terrorism or whatever it is he's in there for. I mean, that's a whole other uh, subject altogether. I mean, I personally feel that, you know, things like prisons should be for violent offenders, period, end of story. And that individuals like Leighton, you know, although, you know, they caused harm and things like that, the, the type of harm that they caused is not equivalent to the type of harm that a murderer or a rapist or a pedophile, uh, it's not equivalent to that, in my humble opinion. Here are echoes of this nonsense throughout the sovereign citizen community. You don't know a pronoun, you just write. Whatever comes to your head, you write down and you think it's factual because you put on a piece of paper. When you say the house or the property, the becomes an ad for modifying property to become a, a, a verb. There's no such thing as a verb property. Why is that? And this is what you guys do. You write lawsuits in such a way, and same with the deed of trust, it's written in such a manner to ensure anything that was going to be a fact is modified to now become a verb, an adjective, a pronoun, um, or other parts of speech, but certainly not a fact. And you and I can go back almost on day long, but the proof is you don't know what you're writing. You think you do, but you really don't. Um, I think he does. <laughs> I bet if I read his complaint, I would know exactly what he was saying. How Funny how that is. Yet if you wrote it your way, nobody uh, would understand what you're saying. Don't forget to hit like. The boys would really appreciate it. Unless you have something against Frankie and Ali. We, we, I'm sure we could go all day long. Uh, like the Federal Postal Service, which is a real thing. You guys apparently hold court on sundown on Saturday. We do not. We're not working. I'm taking time out of my day and my fa away from my family to call in to have this conversation with you because the court will eventually require that we have a, what's called a meet and confer about our lawsuit. So that's what I'm trying to do. Are you willing to do uh, what we've asked for in the complaint, which is to release uh, execute a recorded release of both the writ that you issued and the judgment for $10 million plus. Execute. Is that like when you execute a human being on death row, David? Is that what you mean by that? And so he's actually mitigating with Leighton here. $10 million, huh? Wow. That you issued against our client. Are you willing to do that? Um, are you willing to complete the charity project and prove you know the parts of speech and the words you're writing? No, Leighton, I have other things to do. I have other clients, and I'm not even going to get in. I mean, has anybody ever agreed with you besides the uh, judge of your alleged court? Who has actually agreed with you? A third party objective agreement on what you guys are doing. It goes back to the point. Are you willing to complete the charity project and write out the parts of speech in your own lawsuit even? Uh, asked and answered. You asked this question. And he said no. Nicer than he should have, but he did. So in this part right here, think about this. Just take this into consideration. That's all I ask. If Leighton had not started this conversation the way he did, if Leighton would have rather started it out in an educational knowledge cultivating uh, fashion, explaining why he uses the grammar he uses and what the parts of speech are, what they mean, what modification is, the importance of grammar, as I explained it to you earlier in the video, rule one, rule equal. At this point, um, he could have, I think, perhaps maybe had a favorable outcome if he wouldn't have gone into right into that mode that he went into. It's just a guess on my part, of course. You know, it's he said, she said, or oh, woulda, coulda, shoulda. Again, this is a video of opinion. I'm just throwing things out there, possibilities of how to deal with things uh, from not only from my own personal experience, but from uh, other individuals that I know that have been in these types of situations. Did, in fact, say no. Can you, can no. you identify the part? Perhaps David maybe would have 
played along with this or vacated. You never know. Certainly, I mean, I would enjoy a conversation with David Funkhauser. Um, I'm going to actually tag him in this video with a hashtag. I mean, I don't know what good that does. I'm not a tech guy. But uh, I'm actually going to tag him in this and, you know, maybe something will come of it. I'd enjoy uh, a conversation with that individual because he seems to know at least a, a little bit about it. Already, it's already, already set, set out. out. No, it's set out. The judge has not taken issue with our pleadings. He's going to take an issue, I think, with the answer you filed because it's not an answer. Oh, yeah. So he's either the judge is... <laughs> it wasn't an answer. I sued you guys to... for fraudulent grammar. That's what happened. So you got 48 yeah, days. You haven't sued you, 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 you've sent... 48 days is a generous timeline there. ...does something from your silly court that we're not going to respond to in the judge's order yesterday. So here's another interesting thing, ladies and gentlemen, that I'm going to point out to you which also indicates or is indicative of a lack of knowledge on Leighton's part is that he's playing along with this judge thing that he's coming in under the judge, under the fiction system right now as we speak. He hasn't spoke up about his position or anything like that. He is basically, you know, silence is consent, consenting to being subversive or subservient to the judge, the fiction judge that this David guy is referring to. So that that's mind boggling that someone who is supposedly a federal postal judge under David Wynn Miller and Russell J. Gould would have this severe lack of knowledge. I am by no means a legal or lawful authority on fiction, uh, laws, rules, codes, how to be an attorney, how to be a judge, or anything like that. I'm ignorant to that stuff. What I go with is the logic of what, how things work. Rule one, rule equal, and how contract works. Contract is the same wherever, whenever you are. Not whenever. Why did I say that? Wherever you are, contract is the same uh, terms and conditions. And logic, if you are able to convey it in, a, in an articulate, peaceful, neutral, calm manner, will always, always come through and cut through the BS. And so that's how I figured these things out about judge mechanics. And Leighton has basically made himself sort of like a Vasily to the judge. I mean, he's he's submitted to the judge's authority in this. Wow. He said we don't have to do that. He wouldn't even get on to participate in this court because you've sued him as well. Isn't that correct? Judge exactly Stephen right. Lagan, a United States District Court you've also, judge you've also sued. Call on the law so you guys read it. Well, I don't know if you guys can actually read it because I don't like you guys can read a fact. No, I can't oh read it because goodness. it's a bunch of gibberish crap, and I'm not going to take time to read it. I'm not going to take time to read something that doesn't make any sense, and nor is the court. And neither you sued or tried to sue a United States District Court judge. I think that's going to have very bad ramifications for you, Leighton. So I would give again, you a second. Again, you got opinion. No kidding. So it goes back to the point. Wow. Um, if you guys can complete the charity project, that proves to me you guys have some sort of idea what you're actually talking about. But at this point, it doesn't sound like you want to complete that or do anything in that matter when it comes to grammar. You assume you're going to be correct on everything, but it goes back to the point where you guys don't know what you're actually writing, and you've never known what you're. I, I assume he's going to be correct on everything too. <laughs> just, just my gut. You're writing. You just write whatever you feel like, and you think it becomes a fact because you put it on a piece of paper. So that, that goes down to it. It all goes down to grammar. What? what? Oh Lord! It all goes down to grammar. No, it doesn't. Uh, grammar's in there to the extent that we're talking about grammar. What these people are suggesting is completely wrong, absurd and doesn't follow any rules or make any sense. But it, it really does get down, ultimately, in these cases, I've been litigating for almost 25 years now, it really gets down to the facts and the, and the law. I, it... Mike, I'm addressing you directly. It does come down to the grammar. In order to have a law, you must have grammar. If you don't have grammar, 
or a trade medium with which to articulate your laws. There are no laws. And this is another example, in my opinion, of someone from the fiction minimizing grammar, but at the same time saying the opposite. I go back to the comment at the beginning that I shared. A legal language that the normal layperson can't understand. So you got to hire someone like this and pay them $2,000 retainer and pay them, you know, 50 to to $100 per email or phone call because you don't know how to talk. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Entertaining anyways. It, it, as it should. That, that's how it works. What charity? What, why do you say it's a charity? What kind of charity are you running? That's called I'm a charity project. The charities, lady. Real charities, 501c3 organizations. Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> you can tell the information I already gave it to you, so you can, whether you took. So now, Layton, it appears, has run out to the end of his uh, rope of knowledge here. Um, this attorney, David, again, I. I have to give him props for the performance here. He has literally run circles around Leighton Lionel Ward. It's time to study or not, I don't know. I did not, and like I said, I'm not going to. So okay. uh, it sounds like we're at an impasse here. You, you're not going to agree to do the requested, the items we requested in our lawsuit, and we're not going to do your quote-unquote charity I'm not. Product. I'm not going to release. If Jeff B. Miller wants to record or release it, that's his own business. I'm not going to. He just said Judge Miller. Well, that's interesting, because I have to guess that he's referring to Colin David Ivanwin, Colin Miller. This begs the question, why is Leighton serving 20-some years in prison, yet David Wynn Miller, nothing happened to him, and he's involved. I'm going to record a release of the judge of the documents filed in the county are 100% correct. Mathematically, they're 100% correct. <laughs> so if he wants to do that, that's on his own. You can do that. That's his choice. I'm not... And also, this implies that Colin David Eiffel Wynn, Colin Miller, at most, authored the documents that Layton's referring to or at least co-authored them, or at least least um, gave it the okay. This is some interesting and unsettling to me uh, information that I didn't know. I'm going to release the judgment. That's his choice. Well, I, I can tell you as, a, as an attorney and, again, a guy who studied a lot of math, you, you, you don't make um, judgments regarding sentence structure via mathematics. Well, that's true, what he's saying here. However, the mathematical interface in the grammar is only such that the facts in the correct sentence structure maintain their integrity and value forwards and backwards. Just like a math problem. 1 plus 2 equals 3, 3 minus 2 equals 1. Correct sentence structure works the same way. That's what Leighton's talking about. However, I really can't say for sure if Leighton comprehends that. But that's insane. <laughs> But I did get questions and comments based on uh, Russell Gold uh, video. People ask, well, what is this? What they do is, is they come up with this stuff and they say, oh, you owe us uh, a fake judgment or whatever. But they record it in a real scenario, in, in, in an actual government office. So then when someone tries to sell their property or whatever, they, they can't get clear title because there's – and there, it's a complete nonsense and there's no basis for it, but it's it's incredibly problematic for, for a person to just have all this junk to clear up. Okay, so now that that's what I was looking for right there. Thank you, Mike, uh, for, for giving me that little bit of data there. I see what was happening there. Definitely, definitely Lionel 
or Leighton does not have closure on the grammar or even the mechanics of how to use it in that type of scenario. Um, if, if that's what was happening. And I can see how in the fiction, how that would cause a lot of monetary damage to people if that's the way they were doing it. That's crazy. And that, to think that Colin David Ipewin, Colin Miller would be involved in that and stand by and, and, and let that stuff happen. That's, I can see how it could be construed as, as, um, well, the way it was construed. Wow. You, you have to, to pay attorneys to clear these things out and, and get clean title because you want to sell your house, which has a, a nonsense $10 million judgment against it from postal court. I, I, he's already agreed to do that. And we're checking with the title company to see if that's effective. And if it is, we will probably resolve this with Mr. Bulmer. But if it's not, and if they say we need something from you or the court, your, your, your fake court, we're going to come back or we're going to get the court to compel that so we can record that as well. So that there's no when longer When you just said title. fake court, what part of speech was court? Do you know what part of speech court was when you just said that? <laughs> a real court. Layton. A real court. What is, okay, what is real court? What part of speech is that? There's two words. What, what part of speech is it? How is it any different than the, you just repeated it back to me? You're saying the exact no, because, same thing. We're no, having a what conversation. What I'm telling you right now is I understand what I'm talking about. I have to communicate in a language you understand, which is fiction. But I'm asking you, do you know what the words real court is? Can you identify is it an adjective, a pronoun, a verb? What, what those two words are they? So during this whole uh, conversation, Leighton, uh, by his own words, has pretty much violated rule one, rule equal, because as he is now, he's accusing David of, I mean, David Funkhauser, of using a fictitious conveyance of grammar, asking him to identify the parts of speech of the words he's using. However, Leighton has done no such thing for his own words. So you see what I'm saying about rule one, rule equal. If you're going to tell somebody, hey, you're using a fictitious conveyance of grammar, then you yourself better darn well be able to use a correct conveyance of grammar yourself and be able to show the hows and whys of it and teach the other contract party how it's done. Otherwise, it's a violation of rule one, rule equal, the simplest of judge mechanics. And unfortunately, that's uh, my perception of what's happening here. Do you know what they are? I, I don't know. It's okay. referring to an actual thing that exists. A court. A real court. The United States <laughs> real District court. court. Which is a when court. you say the word real or court. Mojave County Court. Also a real court. Your court is not a real court. It's a fake court. And it's a bunch of silliness and you know it. A fake court. So fake court would be an adjective pronoun. Again, what you're doing is every single word. And again, I can talk to you in fiction because I'm trying to communicate with you, but uh, you're that's a thing, kind of sort of at a bypass, because you're not willing to admit to the fact that you don't know what you're actually talking about and certainly don't know what you're writing. Everything you write is in a manner to create no facts whatsoever. It's just opinions. And then what you guys do is you take, you cite other cases. So you'll go to another judge or you try to get other opinions of other judges and try to make them look like facts. You can have a hundred opinions. They don't end up being anything other than just one more opinion. See that? And that's, yes, and they're the, legal opinions. Legal opinion. In real courts. They're, it's legal. You know, what, so you know what the word opinion means? Our United States judicial system works. You know what the word opinion means? I, well, here, do me a favor, Lane, because I'm not going to do this all day. Why don't you, well, yeah, you, you can. talk in the way – how, how, give me a sentence of how you think it – tell me something in a sentence form of how you think it's structurally correct, just for my own I just I wrote it all to you, so remember you said you weren't going to look at that. So if you want to take the time to read it, yeah. that's all. Okay. That's, that's the icing on the cake right there, ladies and gentlemen. That attorney – that attorney – knows more about the grammar than this Mike guy or Leighton because he just called Leighton to the carpet and Leighton shied away from it. Leighton wouldn't do it. Why? Because I'm pretty sure he can't do it. I'm pretty sure Leighton... I'm 99.9% .9 sure Leighton does not have closure on correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, and David Funkhauser uh, just gave a continuance of the evidence uh, proving the same. It's all there. Uh, Mathematically, I'm, not, it's I'm asking yeah. you because you're asking me. I'm asking you questions, and you're asking how, what's between the and what's the good for the goose is good for the gander. I'm just curious. 
Well, you do a five, six, seven position lodial fact will be for the court. Oh, no. That's the only way you come arrive at a fact. When you say the court, the becomes adverb, modifying court to now become a verb. You're making a court to be, there's no such thing as a verb court. See, that's what happens when you write your lawsuits, when you write anything, you write it to create everything that would have been a fact. You guys modify it to be verbs, adjectives, pronouns, um, or everything else but a fact. And that's, that's unfortunate because you guys, you really do believe that you're correct. Uh, that that was actually interesting. He's he's trying to get over this. He actually has a, an obligation. He says it earlier in the, in the federal rules of civil procedure. You really do. You have to uh, have the, you have to have this meeting and try to work things out. He has the, he's determined they can't they can't work it out. But it, it was fascinating to me that the attorney actually asked him to say it verbally to him, and he can't do it. He, he can't do it exactly. And and now, as I said. Uh, claim to you ladies and gentlemen as i made the statement earlier in the video that i think i know why uh this happened to layton well at least one of the reasons why is because he didn't have closure on the grammar and it's so sad to me that uh that this happened and it just adds more mystery to david Wim miller's involvement in it not only that, but Russell J. Gould's involvement also, because during the Reno seminars in 2018, after David passed, Russell touched upon the Leighton Lionel Ward case in such a manner that he intimated that, that Leighton didn't have a claim of the live life and didn't know what he was doing grammatically. Um, but he didn't help him either. So... Uh, supposedly Russell offered to help him and Le uh, Leighton refused it but that's neither here nor there this is just uh, this is just sad to me he can't do it I mean like if, you know if he just came up with any nonsense and said well that's the way it should be I, I would have had more respect for it but no he can't dodges everything but you're not and it's not fun to admit to it and I get that's why you're not going to but bottom line is I know mathematically I'm correct on this stuff it's so when I write a lawsuit to you guys when I write a lawsuit to was it Judge Stephen Logan? He can I'm say it, it to be 100 but he can't correct prove because it. the documents coming from you guys have been modified to such a fashion to ensure there's no mm. facts whatsoever. And you guys continue to do this over and over and over, and you write. And everything you just said there when you went back and, you know, to go back when you talked about, well, I used five, six, sevens. <clears throat> when he was saying, go back to what he was saying about five, six, sevens. He doesn't say what a five, a six, or a seven is. He just says numbers. And he says, for the court. And he's talking about, if you just say the court, it's an adverb modifying court into a verb. There's no such thing as a court verb, blah, 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 blah. I mean, go back and watch David Wynn Miller videos and you will hear David saying the same exact thing. So as I said earlier, again, it just seems like Leighton is parroting and repeating things that he's heard David or Russell say. But he's not, there's no weight behind it because he doesn't know why. He can't explain it. He got called to the carpet and it wasn't the carpet wasn't there and, and he dug his <clears throat> own hole and, and now he's now he's laying in it, unfortunately. Anything you feel like and assume it's a fact. Just because other people recognize it doesn't mean it's a fact. It's still fraud. That's Title eighteen, section one thousand one and then Title fifteen, section sixteen ninety two E for false and misleading statements. I assure you, any any uh, code provision that he cites is not written in uh, quantum grammar. So I, I don't know why he thinks that all of a sudden has has some vested authority. Well, Mike, I would tell you uh, the reason is because um, the individual that Leighton referred to as Judge Miller translated uh, those codes. Or, or statutes or whatever into quantum grammar. So yes, they do exist in quantum grammar. Well, actually, to be more specific, it's a quasi quantum grammar, but I hope you get my drift. Okay, we're obviously gonna have to agree to disagree on that. On, on who's right and who's wrong here. I'm humble enough to know that sometimes I'm wrong, but I'm not gonna be wrong on this. We are going to... <laughs> This is not going to end. Brother, you're not wrong here. <laughs> no, he's, he's right. You got it. I agree it's with Mike and well David. For you. Again, David's right. You can't maintain this case. having Judge Logan in this case. I don't think that's going to work out well for you. And let me put you on notice. If you try and do anything with this lawsuit, quote unquote lawsuit against me 
or, or worse, my associate, uh, Julia, who's on this, if you try and execute or record any writs or judgments there or here, that's not going to go well because I'm going to move immediately to have those invalidated under 33420, which is a real statute in the state in which we live on, and I will get actual and statutory damages against you guys. And we will then send out the Mojave County Sheriff's Department, who's a real group and a real sheriff, <laughs> to put a writ on everything you guys have out there, including your court, your eagle symbol, whatever we can, and we're going to sell it. And that's how it's going to end. So let me be clear. If you take any action to record any fraudulent documents against me or any member of my firm, that's going to go poorly for you. Do you understand that? I can tell you this. I'm going to do exactly what's correct 100% of the time. I'm not going to be threatened by you in any way, shape, or form. I'm going to do it correct all the time. If you guys are going to continue on fraud, I'll continue being correct until it's fixed. Do you understand that? I understand, Layton. Okay. Did you hear me? Did you hear what I said? Did you do any of this silliness? Can you record anything here? We're going to pursue that to the ends of the earth on a real court. And the real courts are eventually going to take down you and your silly court. I think this is going to end badly for you. I think Judge you Logan is going to send marshals to take you, to, to arrest you, and to put your court, whatever you guys, your transient jurisdiction court, if it's in a van, some whatever crazy stuff you're doing out there, <laughs> it's all going to end. So right. if you want to keep doing this and fictionalize it and have fun and dames on Saturday afternoon with you and your judge uh, and record things and tell everybody how wrong and silly they are, that's fine. But if you take the next step, and you record something against us, that's going to be in poorly for you. That's all I want to say. I'm not going to spend any more time on the phone with you today. I'm not working today. I'm spending time with my family. Julia's got better things to do. So we're ending this conversation. We've, we've tried to resolve this with you. We've tried to meet and confer on this, and you're not willing to agree to what we're asking you to do. So. And unfortunately, Leighton's not hearing what this guy's saying. Uh, this guy is deadly serious. His tone changed. And, um, yeah, wow. Yeah, I'm going to be done. continue being correct. That's all. You do that. Have a good day. Layton, we'll talk you to you. We'll see you in court soon. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. Well, there you have it. Layton Ward and his crazy uh, quantum grammar. He, of course... There was no quantum grammar there, Mike. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that about does it for uh, this reaction video. And um, I just want to say a couple uh, things in closing that uh, it, it really is sad uh, the way that this turned out. Uh, it's very unfortunate. Um, the fact that, that, the, that Mike told us what was happening and that Leighton was accepting money uh, to do these things and that's basically ripping people off because what well, through nascence or whatever i have to i have to guess however that he had to have some inkling of that there was something wrong with what he was doing i mean with the people around him supposedly you know david win miller and russell j gould russell did claim to say that he was telling Leighton that there were gaps in his knowledge but David, supposedly being the judge in the case, uh, in Layton's case, n permitting or allowing or just standing by as Layton was doing these things? Or, I mean, I don't know, maybe was David getting money from this too? Who knows? Who knows? I mean, we're just getting into a. He just opened up a whole can of worms with this video for real. Uh, for real R-E-A-L uh, in the fiction sense just opened up a whole can of worms here and it's left me with a very unsettling feeling I'm not sure it's something that I'd want to pursue any further personally uh, my own sensation after this video and I remind you ladies and gentlemen that I have said in the past that I feel that the whole construct that uh, Russell J. Gould is promulgating and charging money for live life claims and things like that, all the things that they're doing over there, to me, from my perception, are all fiction. It's all part of the fiction system. Because there is no 
evidence that anyone over there has closure on the grammar. And I've shown that again and again with all kinds of, you know, publicly shared documents authored by him. Not only from his website, but to his YouTube channel and to the publicly available PDFs that are up. I mean, the grammar is not correct. It's not mathematically certified forwards and backwards. And if you check out my videos, I give closure to that. I show the mistakes and I show how to correct the mistakes. And I also offer to teach uh, any of those individuals that would like to learn and get closure on their gaps in the knowledge of the grammar. I'm, I'm happy to help them with that if they come in under my terms and conditions, which are rule one, rule equal, honor, grace, and peace and neutrality. Um, also, the offer goes for Mike, the real attorney, if he wants to have a conversation about quantum grammar. I would certainly uh, love to do that um, if he's open-minded about it, of course. And this is just really something I don't want to go into anymore because it is to me, it's fiction. And learning what I just learned from this video causes me to think that even back then there were fiction elements involved in that construct. Make no mistake, correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar is a pure technology if you know it what you use it for is up to you okay and what i found it's useful for is to stop trespass again utilizing rule one rule equal balance of the honor and grace uh peace and neutrality and that's that uh thanks for watching if you want to learn quantum grammar, you're welcome to study the over 400 videos on this YouTube channel, the one you're watching right now. Also, I provide confidential, one hour, one-on-one, -on -one correct grammar workshops. And the way to apply for that is to email me at the email address down here. And I'll set up a 10 to 15 minute consultation, video consultation, I'll provide the venue where you and I can look at each other and you can ask me whatever you want to ask me. And I'll do the same. Rule one, rule equal. Geometric level playing field of communication. Also, you can join the membership of this channel. There are two tiers. The first tier is the loyalist tier. And that's just for people who want to, you know, contribute a little value to this channel to keep it afloat and keep it going. And the second tier are for those who are interested in a little bit more they are loyalists and contributors and they get exclusive content, exclusive videos and polls and things like that. And they also help to determine the direction of the vessel. They have a voice in it because they are contributors. It's their duty. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time. Salute.